Hi, my name is Emery. And in high school, I developed severe anorexia. I'm actually 50 pounds heavier now than I was by the time I was a senior in high school. I weighed myself obsessively. I wore three sweatshirts to hide my weight loss and no matter what weight I got to, it wasn't good enough. I remember the day my parents thought I had a problem and they took me to go see a doctor. And she told me, if you keep going on like this, you're going to die. You're never gonna be able to have children. And despite her hurtful words, it wasn't enough to change me. A year later, I went off to college and it was harder to hide the fact that I wasn't eating. So I started binging and purging instead. It caused me a lot of pain and suffering. And even by the time that I wanted to stop, I couldn't. I remember the person that I was dating at the time tell me that he couldn't believe I was so weak that I let this happen to myself. But that wasn't the truth either. And um, I eventually asked my mom if I could go see someone. So she took me to a nutritionist, to a counselor, but nothing helped me. And night after night, I went home to my dorm room and did the same thing, despite the way it made me feel. Um, but three years ago on Easter, I got saved and I went back to school and I started reading about who God said that I was. And I thought maybe that he didn't want me to live in the suffering and pain. And so about a month later, I came to visit my parents and they took me to Fusion Church. And I wasn't expectant for anything that day. But at the end of service, Pastor Brendan was urging the church to go up and use the prayer team. He said that someone in this place was really going to get healing. And I thought to myself, like, maybe that person could be me. Like, maybe that's what God wanted for me. And so he started individually introducing the prayer team one by one and telling a little bit of their story. And he stopped on this lady by, by the name of Barb Gilmore, who I actually serve on the greeting team with today. And um, he introduced her and I knew that she was the person I had to pray with. So I told my parents that I was going to go get prayer and I went up and I was so nervous. I thought that I was gonna be met with judgment. I thought that I was probably the only one ever that came to this church that had this problem. And we know that that's not true of anything. Um, so I told her about my eating disorder and she just looked at me and said, okay, let's pray. And she grabbed my hands and she closed her eyes and she prayed, um, Lord, we just would pray that this eating disorder wouldn't have hold on Emory any longer. And I was crying and you know, I went back to my parents and they were like, what's wrong? And I was just like, it was just so beautiful. That night I drove back to school and I woke up the next morning and I ate my meals and I went to class and I had a great day. And the next morning I woke up and the same thing and the next morning the same thing and the next morning the same thing. And I haven't thought about starving myself or thrown up or counted a single calorie for a single day in the last three years. I've had three years of freedom because I believe with a like faith the size of a mustard seed that maybe God would move on my behalf. Like maybe he would want to see me healed. Maybe he didn't have a life of suffering in my plans. And I can sit here and say that I really had three years of freedom, that he's given me a gift that's greater than any gift I could ever have. Not only my salvation, but also the gift to love myself. A little short time after that, I found a verse that sort of just jumped off the page and that's 2 Corinthians 7, 11 through 12, which says, well now, isn't it wonderful? all the ways in, this, in which this distress has goaded you closer to God. You're more alive, more concerned, more sensitive, more reverent, more human, more passionate, more responsible. Looked at from any angle, you've come out of this with a purity of heart. And that's really living.